Hey, what's up guys, Hafu here. So right here, I have two Harvard University application essays that got accepted into Harvard. Today, I'm gonna be reading you one of them. And in another video, I'll read you the second one. The essay prompt for this essay is, you may wish to include an additional essay, optional, but you know, it's not optional. If you feel that the college application forms do not provide sufficient opportunity to convey important information about yourself or your accomplishments, you may write on a topic of your choice. And our essay today from Janice chose to write about love. What is love? A promise at the altar? The soft kiss of water on parched lips? A flash of his shadow grayed eyes, or the tender caress of pink pigment on her cheekbones. I love those Jimmy Choo's. I just love the pizza salad a la Mondays. I love you. I love you more. Love, for a word describing such a powerful emotion, it is always in the air. The word love has become so perversive in everyday conversation that it hardly retains its roots in blazing passion or deep adoration. In fact, the word is thrown about so much that it has become difficult to believe society isn't just one huge smitten party with everyone holding hands, singing Kumbaya in films. It's the teenage boys grudging response to a daunting mother. At school, it is a habitual farewell between friends. But in my Chinese home, I'm Chinese too, by the way, I feel this essay a lot. It's never uttered. Watching my grandmother lie unconscious on the hospital bed, waiting for her body to shut down, was excruciatingly painful. Her final quivering breaths formed a discordant rhythm with a steady beat. Oh my god, there's so many hard words in here. <laughs> okay. Her final quivering breaths formed a discordant rhythm with a steady beat of the hospital equipment and the unsympathetic tapping hands of the clock. I whispered the first ever Ever said to her. My rankling guilt haunted me relentlessly for weeks after her passing. My warm confessions seemed anticlimactic, met with only the coldness of my surroundings, the blank room, impassive doctors, and empty silence. I struggled to understand why the love that so easily rolled off my tongue when bantering with friends dissipated from my vocabulary when I spoke to my family. I totally feel this. I totally feel this girl right here. Janice, you're speaking my emotions. Do Chinese people simply love less than Americans do? As I look back on 17 years growing up in my Chinese family, I don't feel a gaping hole where love should be. I see my grandmother with her fluff of white hair guiding my clumsy fingers as they grip through the Chinese calligraphy brush. Carefully dip just enough ink onto its thick bristles and slowly smooth the pigment over the tan parchment to form wobbly Chinese characters. I taste the sweet watermelon brought to my room at 3 a.m. during finals week by a worried mother, and I hear the booming voice of my father begging me to get more sleep. I envision Baba waiting in the 100 degrees heat every day to pick me up from school, just to drive home in traffic infested roads. My mama, mother, staying home from work to care for my cold when feeling no resentment when she contracted it herself. My mistakes yielded stern, harsh lectures brimming with concerns while my tears assuaged my mama's irritations. I picture that arcane emotion imprinted in tacit 
smiles and hidden tears, shining from chest and unabashed pride. Within the realm of my memories, I discovered a truth that lessened my crushing regret at the toss of my grandmother. Just because Chinese love, I can never render the fondness for Britney Spears toxic, or to be prostituted to mold the description of delicious dishes. The emotion isn't any more absent or less. Profound. Knowing that I could simply have shared with my grandmother an implicit love that neither of us chose to address verbally, I could lessen my selfish grip on her past and allow her to ascend into her future. Although the alien expression "wa aini, mama, baba." Will be met with a few awkward blinks and、uh, "How much money do you need?" expression. I feel the fondness of my father like great drums throbbing through the air, and my stern mother in great pulsing tides, as Counting Colin articulates in Heritage. We Chinese aren't limited by the cultural and linguistic love barrier. We learn through living together as a family. Through our shared experiences, the sensation of true devotion and compassion, and if that's not something Americans call love, then I don't know what love is. The end. Wow, reading this essay, it felt like a book. You know, it felt like something that you read in novels. I really love Janice's nuanced take on the word love. It is something that is very hard to describe, and when you write about love, it is very easy to come off as cheesy or come off as you know cliche. But this essay was rooted in her own background, expressing her Chinese culture. So this essay demonstrates her insight, her personal growth, and her writing skills. So the overall essay reads very smoothly, and it just connects from one point to the next, and that's what I really love about this essay. And I chose it because I personally connect a lot with this essay, and I'm sure a lot of you do if you are Asian. <laughs> She has a very unique voice in this essay, and it's something that the judge will remember her for. If you want to hear more Harvard essays, click that subscribe button and turn on notifications because the YouTube algorithm is not gonna give you every single video, so it will make sure that you don't miss anything. My name is Hafu Guo. Click here to see 10 Harvard habits that you must implement into your life to be a more productive student. I'll see you next time. Peace.